This woman quickly acquires the ability to listen to men's thoughts, but regrets it. Sports agent Ali meets her Davis. He gets up super early to take care of stupid customers. All to stand at the top of a harsh pyramid. Supporting her is Brandon, an assistant who accompanies her in her management work at Summit Worldwide. And then we see the dating app she took down. The only thing she has time for is her work. She worked hard to get promoted to partner. She arrives at work and takes the elevator. Ali sees a beautiful neighbor who she calls herself Captain Um Funktastic, very close to her real name. Both Ali and Brandon try to get his attention. Yes, Brandon likes men. Unfortunately, because the Sigma guy is listening to the American Psycho soundtrack and he doesn't have time to get involved with women. The pair reach the pinnacle of alpha male dominance, sort of between the Boy Scout Club and the real movie mania. Ali attends a social gathering with the other boys and prepares for her boss Nick to elect a new senior vice president. When Nick throws a soccer ball, Ali catches it thinking she is for him. Of course not. It's Eddie, the man sitting two seats next to her. Wait, I thought Ellie had to deal with her boss. I mean, considering how cute she is, she definitely deserves her promotion. Ally confronts Nick. She wants to know why she wasn't promoted. Ally works hard, but it turns out she doesn't get along with the other guys. Ally said she was in contact with men a lot before she deleted the dating app. Ally storms out of Nick's office, she signs basketball superstar Jamal Berry, and she declares that she'll show everyone why she deserves a promotion. Ally spends time with her father, Skip, at the boxing gym he runs. Dad supports girl. It's a man's world, baby. Be strong, lift your head, and pull yourself up with the straps of your boots. Be yourself, this is common advice. They go out to dinner, but Ellie meets a new bartender named Will. Ali followed her father's advice and she decided to show the man Tama. Ali introduces himself and Will mixes her a special cocktail, vodka, and sweet syrup. As you know, things escalate quickly. You go back to him and play hide and seek, 50 shades of black. The next day, Ali wakes up to find Will's son with a strange mask on her head. Wakanda eternal moments. It rather reminds me of Bane. Realizing that she will be late, she finds a picture of Will and his wife and flies off. Ali said she was embarrassed to be with a married man after just two hours of dating and she left. I can sympathize. She thinks Ali wants to sign a deal with Jamal and his manager and father, Joe Dara. What a name. It doesn't go well from the start because Ali calls Joe a bastard behind his back and he overhears it. He also wants a magazine cover for his son, but Ali has to negotiate with basketball legend Lisa Leslie to share it with Joe. Lisa rejects and dismisses Joe's intention to work with Ali. To make matters worse, Brandon pointed out that something was taped to Ali's back, and it was a suspicious white spot that everyone was looking at. We've all experienced it. Just kidding, guys. I am working hard to become a magician by the age of 40. Ally attends Mary's bachelorette party with her best friends Mary, Olivia, and Sierra. The girls are in Ali's pain, but she agrees that she is terrible to men. Women's moments. Olivia hired a psychic named Sister to read their fortunes. And go first. Her sister reads her Uno card to check any issues. Well, it's written all over her face. Girls, if you want to solve the problem, let's have some tea. Then the women go to the club and dance. Add lemon juice and oregano and mix. Go to the bathroom. To make matters worse, Ellie is hit by a cheeky balloon, stumbles, and ends up drinking her ganja. She awoke in the hospital to hear her doctor's thoughts about drinking and eating salt through her nose while she was at work. Wait a minute, she just heard what this guy thinks. Now I can see how things are going. Ellie and her friends are picked up by Brandon and driven to work in her car. She overheard Brandon's sarcastic remarks about her, after which Ellie realized she could hear Brandon's thoughts. They both quickly panic. Ellie gets out of the car, walks to work, and overhears a man's random thoughts. Well, it's not the Einstein-level conversation you think it is. Overwhelmed, she goes about her business and uncovers even more sinister and dark secrets from the men around her. Just as her fun begins, Ali decides to ditch her new talents and visit her sister, but after a relaxing head massage, her sister can't do anything. Ali realizes that it's not so bad after all, and that reading men's minds can give her a career boost, so she does. Ali finds out that her co-workers are enjoying her secret poker night, but she hasn't invited herself. She shows up at Ethan's house to find Nick with Joe Dora, Kevin, Mark Cuban, Grant Hill and Shaquille O'Neal. Great setting, no wonder you weren't invited. Ali reads the boys' minds and she beats them all until it's just her and Joe. She loses to him on purpose to satisfy the man. Well done. With talent like this, you can keep people's pockets empty. Yet, for some reason, Ellie decided to continue her tedious job as an agent. At her house, Ali meets her neighbor who is in love with her. She read his mind and realized he wanted her here and now. Well, girls really live in easy mode. Things escalate quickly, and the man tries to show her around his house, but she learns of his love for Bane and backs down. Joe then takes Jamal to Summit Worldwide Management to hear a presentation from Kevin on how Jamal can be marketed. Status, Kevin presents Jamal with a creepy rap video photoshopped on his face, but Ali hears that Jamal and Joe don't like it. She's sorry, but you don't have to be psychic to see this. She comes forward and tries to listen and speak to Jamal's thoughts, but as you can imagine, she's also completely critical of Kevin's thoughts. The woman surpassed her. Joe and Jamal are impressed. She catches them on their way out and invites them to a weekend basketball game, but Joe plans to spend the time with his family. He also does not believe Ali to be her family man and does not trust a woman without her family. Then Will and Ben came in with perfect timing. Ali disguises Will and Ben as her husband and son. 
This causes Joe to trust Hallie and agree to go to the match. I wish someone could pretend to be your girlfriend. Ben gives Hallie her driver's license, which she forgot at home. Ben then informs him that his wife died in a fatal accident some time ago. Tragic. Ari is horrified at what she believes Will has cheated on her, so she tries to make amends by inviting her boys to the game and following a fake family plan. Of course. Meanwhile, Kevin, who made this cringe rap video, is furious. He questions her about how she made him look, but Ali believes Kevin turned her down so Eddie would win. But Kevin thinks the opposite, sees her numbers up, and openly admits that he actually goes all out for her. So it's not a matter of patriarchy, it's just that Ali is too aggressive. It was clear to everyone but her. The counterfeiters go to the skybox and talk. Ali didn't tell Will she was a sham, so she's a little awkward. Girls never tell men when they're fake anyway. Ben throws in a nickel, saying that her birthday is coming up and he wants the race car cake Ali had promised. Then he unexpectedly hugged her. At least Ben knows how to act outside the skybox. Ali introduces Jamal Carl Anthony Towns. Jamal panics inside, but keeps his cool when he meets his idol. Joe then tells Ali that she seems interested in signing with her company. Score, I call it a hat trick. Oh wait, it's basketball. Game, game. Doesn't matter. Meanwhile, Brandon rebels against Mr. Moriarty, upset that her boss is using Will as her fake family, and decides to let her go on a date with Will this afternoon. A double date with her Mary and her fiancé James. Why not? Let's be more embarrassed. Allie also tells Brandon that a man named Danny in the office actually likes men and is crazy about Brandon. In this world, even Omega can score. Allie and will take Mary and James to the pool hall to play ball. Okay, Allie heard James thinking about applauding the waitress, so Allie decided to discreetly hit James into the ball with the pool cue. Ari also overhears Will thinking really sweet about her, enough to make her stomach butterflies. Allie then introduces Will and Ben to his father. Skip seems skeptical of Will at first, but sees Will as a devoted father and becomes close, and the two fall in love. When things improve and the job is ready, it turns out that Joe will take Jamal to China in a deal arranged by Ethan. The latter left Summit Worldwide Management, a wise choice. You know, this lady could quit her agency and do all that poker work she just talked about, but without her ambitions. Nick was furious and nearly fired her. He then sees Will outside, revealing that Ali only took advantage of him to make a deal with Joe. Will leaves hurt. A moment of female manipulation. Ali then attends Mary's wedding, but she gets into trouble. As they read the vows in church, she steals the topic by saying that James went psyched about Mary's cousin Gabby. Brandon tries to stop Ali, but she tells him to shut up because Ali is just an assistant. The boy is offended by him and runs away, but the party is not over yet. Ali didn't give specifics, but did mention how Sierra's husband polished other men's pipes. This leads to an all-out battle royale, the quintessential Bronx wedding, where the women start fighting. A random woman grabs a vase and stuns Ali with it. A true highlight reel. Ali wakes up in the hospital again and she sees the same doctor, but she can't read his mind now. Good or not, her skills are lost. So are their friends. I know this feeling it all started for me with my first minute movies video. Two years later, I wake up with no friends, a big mayonnaise stain on my shirt, and no memory of eating a hot dog. Anyway, Ali first apologizes for her treatment of Brandon at work. He forgave her and we found out she and Danny were in a relationship. Score. They discuss Jamal, but she realizes that she doesn't hear what Jamal really wants. She finds him enjoying basketball in the park and suggests he stay in Atlanta, a happier place. Ali then visits her friends. They are still angry with her, but she apologizes and she offers to pay for her margarita montage from now on. Given immediately. The NBA draft takes place and Jamal remains in Atlanta. Joe thanks Ali for making Jamal happy. Nick calls another meeting with the team. Ethan is back on the team, but he will be put on probation for a year. This leaves the partner slot open, but do you know who it will be? Our girl Ali. However, Ali has decided not to be part of the boys club anymore. She resigns and sets up her own agency with Kevin as a partner, taking all her customers. She even decides to make Brandon her agent. True. That Omega nerd? Ali goes to Ben's birthday party and brings the cake he asked for. Will is still angry, but Ali apologizes and convinces him to give him another chance. He agrees, as long as you keep him quiet for now. Number 50 Shades of Grey. That's definitely what Will wanted to hear. Does he eat margaritas on Mondays too? Ali, Will and Ben take a walk in the park together while Ali discusses her agency plans.